we knew that it's going to transform medicine and therefore we should be teaching people about it ahead of time. And then all of a sudden, as we were planning to teach ahead of time, generative AI took off so fast that now we felt like, oh gosh, we're actually behind, right? We're behind. Whereas the first time I think we mentioned AI was seven years ago with the ACC, that algorithms, big data and AI were important. It was before I even had this position. And so seven years ago, we'd started thinking about it. We were planning and then all of a sudden, it was a little bit of a swift kick that said, hey, enough planning, get it out there. Let's start teaching people. Let's start making it a conversation. Um, after we launched, about a month and a half later, um, we started doing surveys of our members and really found that especially generative AI and image-based AI are already out there in practice. And yet our clinicians' comfort level with it is lower than the percentage of how many people have it available to them or where it's being used in practice. And that ratio is what I really want to address right now. I want to make sure that our team is working hard such that those who already have it in place are using it to the best of their ability, are understanding and are giving feedback, and that all those programs who want to start using it understand where's the right place in my organization at this time. AI could be used everywhere. Um, my, my fifth grade, almost sixth grade daughter is in the Planet Protectors Club and she tells me, mom, you, you can't use AI everywhere. It's really bad for the environment and my generation needs you to not do that. So you have to select when you're going to use it. Um, and, and that was really helpful information for me. Um, and so as I think about it, the cost is also significant for systems, right? So we have to decide where we're using AI, how we're going to use it, where we should use it first. And all of that is what we're trying to do as we embark on teaching via the AI-enabled um, Clinician Resource Center. And we're also gonna have a series of workbooks and playbooks come out in terms of here specifically, how you can assess your own readiness and help determine where are the first places you need to go. We're gonna start with generative AI for that. We at the American College of Cardiology actually call it the AI-enabled clinician. And the goal is not that everybody understands exactly how to create the algorithms, how to use the programs. It's that they understand what is AI, what are the different types. We're using one word AI, what we really mean is kind of seven different things, right? So where is it useful? What is it? And so we actually have a website at the American College of Cardiology um, that is our AI enabled clinician resource center, which is really start to create adult learning mechanisms, whether that's short podcasts, easily interpretable research, uh, central figures that you can take a peek at and start to understand what different types of AI are and offer those regularly to our members and others. Anybody can come to the website to really be able to start to educate our clinicians on what AI is, where we can use it, where we should use it, where it may not be ready for prime time yet. So I agree. I think education of our clinician body is extraordinarily important if we're going to be effective and if we're going to create a feedback loop to the technology companies like yourselves and others who are creating it. Because if we're facile with it, then we can say, hey, this doesn't work great this way or this is fantastic. Do more of this. But until we're comfortable with it, it's hard to give meaningful feedback. And so I think education of the clinician is essential.